the last 12 months has been electorally extraordinary. Um, the received wisdom of the way elections are won has been shattered. Uh, at, well, one at fought and won has been shattered. Um, strong and stable is the new weak and wobbly almost. Uh, the political insider is in a sense now the pariah, while the political pariah is now the people's champion. Uh, winners are losers, losers are winners, um, and none of this has come about through political strategy, in my view. Uh, it's, there's been no overarching grid in campaigns that have been able to deal with this uh, phenomena. Uh, in a sense, the West Wing playbook has been thrown out of the window. It no longer exists. The 2017 election in the UK was fought in the context of the Labour Party being 24 points behind in the opinion polls on the day that the election was called. It was a chasm that has never been closed in the history of politics in the UK. And one of the key things, as you just said, and how I think we achieved it, was for change, which Robbie spoke about quite extensively, was for change not to be in the abstract, but for us to offer a genuine alternative. And in the UK's context, that was very simply a question of austerity or anti-austerity. But it wasn't in the, it wasn't a cerebral conversation about austerity. It was a practical conversation about austerity. It was an offer that we gave that showed people what could change with an anti-austerity party. Because I think we have to understand that essentially since 2010 election, the political parties have been vying for a space as to who can manage the economy the best in the context of an, an austerity agenda. That changed with this election, with Jeremy Corbyn very clearly uh, nailing the colours of the Labour Party to an anti-austerity uh, agenda. So if I go from that was essentially the context and the theme of where we stood, um, I think it's worth kind of setting out the clear campaign messages. Because if, again, we're going to have change, I don't think that you can have change without an offer. And so we had a very clear offer, and that was an offer around education, free education. It was an offer around a new industrial strategy, jobs, well-paid jobs, technical jobs, an end to zero hours contracts with, you know, kind of people are, are essentially nothing more than when we need you, we'll call you. Uh, it, was, it was an offer about investing back in people. Um, uh, and whilst we didn't use this phrase during the, the election, it was about creating hope. It was about transforming the nature of British society. The second thing that, in, that, that we chose to do in terms of that campaign was to identify who we wanted to speak to. Many of you will have seen, I suspect, that, that there was an extraordinary level of young people's engagement. One of the interesting things about young people's engagement historically is getting them to do two things. One is to register to vote because it's a voluntary system in the UK and therefore young people don't tend to vote. So phase one is to get them to vote and the second is to take them on a journey to motivate them to actually vote on the day and by do it but uh, and we did that and I'll come on to social media but essentially we use social media because I think it is worth as Robbie was saying that elections have been fought on two basic premises uh, in my view since the last four decades you've essentially had an air war and you've had a ground war the air war is about winning the media the ground war is getting your troops on the ground, knocking on doors. 
the, 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 the 2017 election, the air war, essentially, we withdrew from. We simply, I mean, we didn't, we of course, we gave comment to the press, and of course we spoke with journalists, but we understood that there was a hostile media and that we were going to use social media to get our message across. So we did that specifically around young people, and it worked. They registered and they came out to vote. The second group of people were the people who, who Labour had won in 97 in the hope of change in that election and had gently disappeared and stopped voting Labour. Over a million people lost between 97 and 2017. We brought those people back in and they voted for us. We moved from a place of 2015 of around 31, 32% of the vote to 41% of the vote in, in June 2017. So key to the campaign that we ran was to offer, I say retail politics, but you know, that there was a clear offer, that there was a dichotomy between the two main parties. The second was to identify uh, our electorate. And the third is the social media. And I'll just briefly talk about the social media. Um, we used extensively Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but it was significantly targeted at specific audiences, and, and that would be in constituencies, areas, electoral areas. Um, our ability to speak to people specifically in roads a street about the issues that were happening, whether that be a local school, whether that be a local hospital, we were able to drill that far down and speak to them almost directly through social media. That gave us more power than hoping we got a decent quote in the Daily Telegraph or the Times or any of the other newspapers. And that work was done considerably for the 2017 election. It was done in the aftermath of the, of the loss in 2015, where, where smart people, coders, started to create layers and layers and layers and layers of data. Some of it drawn in ourselves through our own canvassing, other through bought data. So understanding, as Robbie was saying, you know, finding out what people are adverts they're seeing, etc. In buying lists, we could see what they were buying from supermarkets. We could see what they were doing, where they were booking their holidays, and we understand and are able to profile uh, people through that, understanding what their family sizes were, whether they had kids, whether they were using the hospital. We were then able to literally talk to them specifically and, and give them our offer. So we relied on ourselves to tell the story, not to rely on the media. And I actually think that's a positive. I know that the whole Trump thing uh, kind of creates a kind of feeling that, that social media is un, you know, unregulated, and undoubtedly it is. But I think that as a political communicator, as a campaigner, that you can use that asset to deliver to people in a way that you can't by using traditional media uh, avenues. Um, if I just finish really, I guess, with saying this, and it's to pick up again from what Robbie was saying, one of the things that is interesting about the election was the belief afterwards, in the immediate afterwards, that it was a battle between left and right, and they had drawn. It was 41-43, there was a hung parliament. I think as time has gone by, I don't think that that's true. I suspect that there is a different analysis now, which is it, is an, it, is, it, it was an election between socially liberal and socially conservative. And I think what was interesting out of Virginia uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, on Monday or Tuesday, is this. The Republicans ran a campaign in Virginia based effectively on the Confederate flag support our traditions, hitting the conservative with a small C base. 
That is not what the Democrats did. The Democrats went for a progressive, um, kind of traditional democratic narrative. Historically, Virginia has been quite an old population. That population has changed as the suburbs of, uh, of Washington have, have kind of stretched out, into, uh, out to there. And the dichotomy, the, the change in the profile reflects, I think, that liberal conservative agenda. Now, one of the interesting challenges over the coming years is also looking at that belief that as people go through those age cohorts of 18 to 25, 25 to 35, 35, you know, et cetera, that people become more conservative. I don't believe that that is happening anymore. I believe that there is a, there is a social liberalism that is now embedded within the British population and that actually the liberalism, the social liberalism, progressive politics um, that is being put forward by the Labour Party, I think is probably uh, becoming the norm. Um, and actually that will then start to be seen as it goes through the older cohort. So for the first time, Labour uh, either won slightly or will neck and neck with the Conservatives on the age group uh, 45s to 55s. And I think that that trend will continue through and through. Um, so I hope that gives you a bit of an insight into into what we did. Um, and I, he, by the way, Robbie sold most of my best lines, which is why I've kind of slightly changed out of the way I've done it. But that's Democrats for you. I have, I have emails, so. <laughs> well, that's punishment for being late. Yes, so. indeed.